and I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name. say some things this morning that I believe that God is speaking to this house and, and I, I want you to understand that God is wanting to arm you for the days of head and it, actually today I want to talk to you about soaking your shield soaking your shield you must understand something you must understand something that the, the devil is just after your faith he's trying to steal your faith and I'm talking to some warriors in here, in here that's not going to let that happen. Come on, give God some praise. Before I do that, Brother Kevin, uh, I want to thank you for this past week. And thank you for your organization and, and all the things that you have uh, helped in pioneering uh, Smiles of Hope for the last 14 years. Amen. Come on. How many patients did we see this, this week? How many patients did you see? Almost 200 patients this week for Smiles of Hope. Extracted how many? 1,116 teeth. And got a lot of people out of pain and on, on, their, on their journey to a brand new smile. Come on, that's, that's a God project. That's a God project. Uh, Wednesday night I spoke to you about uh, about faith and how that the enemy is trying to steal your faith. I'm not here to glorify the devil, but I, I want you to understand something. That without faith, nothing's ever achieved. Nothing. Nothing is ever achieved without faith. And so the enemy has tries to launch attack to try to steal the very thing that brings things to pass. Visions don't come to a reality without faith. Dreams don't come to reality by, without faith. 
And as we dig into this faith, uh, this faith message, I want you to understand something, that the enemy is not going to take you, not going to overtake you, but there's some things that we have to do. Amen? There's some things that we have to do. And I want you to just go ahead and put your seatbelt on for a moment because I believe we're going to have a, have a great journey as we move forward. I'm going to take you to the book of uh, Hebrews for just a moment. At the very first verse, it simply says this. The book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the very first verse after that, it simply says this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it's the unquestionable belief in something without any tangible evidence. Father, I ask you, dear God, Lord, to speak through my mouth. I ask you, dear God, Lord, for clarity. I ask you, dear God, to change lives, dear God, through your word, through your spirit. In the precious name of Jesus, I give you praise. Amen. I want to go ahead and take you uh, down through the passage. It says in 11... In 11.6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. I, I want you just to just to kind of put this in your mind. Wouldn't the enemy try your, his best to try to attack the very thing that's going to please God? Wouldn't he try to attack the very thing or try to come against the very thing that's going to advance you spiritually and uh, bring you to a place that God can use you? See, I understand my position, and I, I want you to understand it. I want you to understand your position. Because the enemy uh, is intimidated, not by you itself, but he wants, you, he wants to make sure that you don't get the reality of who you are in Christ Jesus. See, it's because of Jesus that he won your victory, amen, and bought you back. It's because of him. And if we understand that, if we understand our position and fight from that position, we'll never have another defeat in our life. So the enemy works to try to keep you from having the reality of your position in Christ. Why do you have a position in Christ? Not because of your goodness, but it's the goodness of God. Amen? It's not because of, of how wonderful you've worked and how you kept the law and you kept this and how you've been good to your parents. Being good to your parents will keep you alive on earth. Amen? Come on, can I get a witness? Come on, I said that to you 12-year-olds right out there. Amen. Being good to your parents will keep you alive. But listen to me, being good to your parents doesn't, doesn't change your position in Christ. The, the reason that you have your position in Christ is what Jesus did upon the cross. Amen? He fought for you. The very, all the things that happened to Jesus here upon earth, it was for our benefit. He showed us how to walk, how we can walk with a, the, with a God nature, amen, here on this earth. He took the crown of thorns. I love uh, having Brother Rick back. Brother Rick lays out the word so, so well. And it's increased your faith in your giving. And because of it's increased your faith in your giving, let me tell you this. You are now the lender, not the borrower. Come on, if you're not there yet, go ahead and get excited about getting there. I believe that God wants to give you increase in your finances. That's not what this message is about. See, the enemy, the enemy wants to try to steal the reality or try to get you to doubt your position in Christ. Uh, how many's ever doubted their salvation? Now, now let's everybody be honest. I'm going to be honest. Amen. I'm going to be honest. And I, I, I helped you all. Because when I first got saved, let me tell you this, I didn't have a, a lot of knowledge uh, about being saved. But uh, let me tell you this, the, uh, the enemy tried to talk it out, talk me out of my salvation. Really, he come at me when uh, the first time when I, when I got saved. When I got saved, uh, I was a, a contractor, and, and so I was used to controlling situations with my mouth. How many knows what I'm talking about? How many knows somebody like that? Yeah, Mike, that's what I'm talking about. I would control things with my mouth. That means if I had a problem with an employee or if I had a problem with somebody, my mouth would overrule them or dominate them, so, and it, it was not always pretty. It, matter of fact, it had, it had some, some cussing in there, um, and I would... I would dominate. You said you can't believe, can't believe that would ever come out of my mouth. I couldn't either. Amen. I couldn't either. My mama definitely couldn't even believe it. But the moment I got saved, I got saved, and just a month after that, I had a problem with an employee, and he come at me. Well, I come back at him, and I'm gonna tell you this: my mouth flew open, and boy, cuss words start flying out. I was saved, born again. But let me tell you this, the enemy come at me that time and say, you really, you think you're saved and you, that stuff come out of your mouth? How many's ever been there? 
you think you're saved and you still act like that, you got to understand this soul has to be transformed. Once you get the soul transformed, it starts changing your actions, but it doesn't change the reality that you are born again. So the enemy will, will try his best to steal your faith. He's after your faith. He's after your faith in your salvation. He's after your faith in your, your miracle, your, the things that you're believing for. He's after your faith. So he'll try everything he can to try to take it. The Bible tells us that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he's after the reality to try to get you to doubt your position in Christ. Because if I act the fool, it makes me feel like I don't have a position. Amen? Because if I walk in a position, if I understand my position, it'll cause me to walk in authority. So the Bible tells us in Ephesians, the second chapter, the sixth verse, that I have been seated with him in heavenly places. Why am I seated with him in heavenly places? It's because of what Jesus did when he left the cross. Amen. He that ascended first descended. He went to the depths of the earth and he fought my fight for me. Brother Lord, he, he fought my fight for me. Amen. He dethroned the enemy, took back, took his authority over the earth. And he gave it, when he ascended, he gave it to the church. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians, the, the, the sixth verse of the second chapter, it says this, that I'm seated now with him in heavenly places. My position is determined by the fact that Jesus' grace was sufficient enough to reposition me. So I'm repositioned. I was once a sinner, now I'm not. Listen, I, I had somebody come to me the other day, and they, they looked at me and says, we're all sinners. And, I, I, and we was in right in the middle of busy bee, and I can't just take that. Amen? You say, Brother Tim, that's the way I believe. Well, you believe that, but I pray your, your belief's going to change just in a few moments. The Bible tells me that I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So because of my righteousness, my position in Christ, now I am righteous. I am righteous because Jesus, I put his armor on. Amen? And I'm covered with his righteousness. I'm clothed with his righteousness. So this guy in Busy Bee come up. He's a friend of mine. But I'm going to tell you this. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't just say, yeah, I'm a sinner because I didn't want to admit that. Why? Because I'm not a sinner. I'm not a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner saved by grace. Come on. Is anybody out there? I was a sinner saved by grace, but I'm not a sinner anymore. Amen? The Word tells me that I'm a saint. Now, don't start calling me St. Timothy because I won't respond to that. I'm, I'm, I, hey, I, I may be a saint that occasionally sins, but I don't sin on purpose. Amen? The Bible says anything that's not faith is sin. Amen? But you must understand my position in Christ is I'm not a sinner anymore. I am the righteousness of Christ through Christ Jesus, not through my own works, not how wonderful I am, but how wonderful he is. That's my position. So the enemy is constantly trying to work to pull our position, saying try to keep us from the reality of our position and our authority over him. See, you must understand that your position in Christ takes authority over the enemy. Amen? It takes authority over him. So I'm not defeated. I don't, have to, I don't have to pray to God. Listen, I don't have to pray to God and say, God, help me. Uh, help me whoop this enemy or get this devil for me. I pray, continue to build myself up in faith. But listen to me. That's delegated authority. And the Lord said, you cast out devils. You lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Are you in this house? So I have that authority. I have that authority through Jesus Christ, not in myself, not how good I am, not how wonderful I am, but how good he is. So I'm not fighting for, I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from victory. But the enemy is constantly trying to throw his little fiery darts of doubt and unbelief to try to rob our faith so we'll walk around defeated, come on, like zombies. Come on. And the church is in a place of power and authority. You have now have been repositioned in a place of authority that you have dominion over the devil. So fear, depression, sickness cannot dwell. Amen. Are you in this place? Addiction. Let's say addiction. Amen. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't do it. Come on. I just. I'm going to get on somebody. I'm going to. I'm going to meddle just for a few moments. Amen. 
Are you ready? I'm not trying to trigger anybody. Here I am, I'm, I'm 234. I know you thought I was like 220, especially when John picked me up and threw me over his head a couple of weeks ago. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just powerless, just powerless. I have no power whatsoever against my addiction, whether it's cigarettes or if it's a, if a left-handed cigarette or if it's a right-handed cigarette, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's addiction, no matter what the addiction is. We got some that can't stay in the house for the whole message because you're thinking about a cigarette. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me just yet. There's more. And here's, here's what, I just can't, 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 I just can't. There is no I can't in you. The Bible tells us I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, I'm not weak, I'm strong. You've got to see yourself that way, amen? You've got to see it that way. You've got to understand that the finished work upon the cross of Calvary gave you the power and the authority over anything that the devil ever throw at you. Are you in this house? So I'm, I'm not weak. I don't have to get a bunch of people and say, wait, I just, I didn't just have, I'm just having a struggle. I'm just having a struggle. I'm just having a, that's okay. You're having a struggle. But let's put the word of God in our mouth because the enemy's trying to steal your faith and rob you and put you uh, walking on this earth like a yard bird instead of an eagle. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go on because I'm, I'm, I'm really deep in metal, but I feel the anointing, so I'm, I'm going to go with that. Amen. You are not weak. Now, I'm going to say it again. Men and women, come on, you are not weak. If you're a born-again believer, there's been a transformation that's happened in your spirit. Listen, your soul hasn't caught up with it yet, but I'm going to tell you this. We're going to soak today and fill ourselves up with the Word of God so you'll be able to raise up in your soulless realm and fight the enemy. Come on, defeat him for this last time that he's come against you. I seen a vision for, from somebody. I don't know who it was, but I seen it. I'm going to tell you that you're going to be free today. You're going to be free. Look, look, look at this. This one says, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is rewarded of those who diligently seek him. Then it goes on to say, by faith Enoch. Amen. By faith Noah. By faith Abraham. By faith Sarah. By faith Isaac. By faith Jacob. By faith Joseph. Come on. It was by faith that they'd done the things that they did. What they have faith in, they have faith in God. Not their own ability. Come on, not. But they had a position that God has spoke to them, and they simply walked it out. I've never seen one time where Abraham, he was told, God told him what he was going to do. He said, boy, you're going to possess the land everywhere you put your foot. You're going to have. So this is what Abraham did. He put his shoes on. Amen. He just started walking. Amen. He started walking. He said, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. He walked in enemy territory and smiled and grinned and said, you don't realize it now, but this is my property, your own. Amen. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys hang here for a minute. Make sure you take care of the ground because I will be back. Amen. By faith. By faith, Jacob, Joseph. Oh, I got to say this. By faith, the church. By faith, Brother Kevin. By faith, BJ, Brother BJ. Come on, by faith, Rachel. Come on, are you here in this place? By faith, Brother John. By the faith, Christian. By faith, Sister Tina. I'm saying by faith, what? Faith in God. God, you spoke it. Whatever you tell me, I'm going to do it. Because faith really comes when I walk it out. Not just because I took notes and said, God said, God said this, God told me, God told me to write, God told me to do, God told me to go, God told me to, pre are you doing it? No, I'm, I'm afraid. Because why? Because the enemy has combated and took your faith away from what God has spoke. 
Fear cancels out faith, but faith cancels out fear. But so today, I'm going to tell you this, you're going to soak your shield, and you're going to go out and say, come on, devil. <laughs> Glory to God. Watch this. This is what this is about Abraham. I just want to shout today. Come on. Uh, Romans, the fourth chapter, it says this, the 16th verse. Therefore, it is the faith that it might be by grace. Mm -hmm. Come on. It is by faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed. Say it with me. Say it. I am the seed of Abraham. Amen. <laughs> I'm a child of God. Not to that only which is of the law, but that also is by faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him who may believe, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which are not as though they were. <laughs> Amen. Come on, just bask in that a minute. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body dead, now, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness, now it was not written for his sake alone, but it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it is also imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Come here, baby. Come here. Sister Tina, I can just imagine what it was like, come on, with Abraham and Sarah. Come on, Abraham was old. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Listen to me. If you're in your 80s, you're not old. But if you're 100, you're old. Amen. See, old is uh, 20 years older than you are. But listen, Abraham's old. And Sarah is old. Amen. But the promise had delayed. The promise had delayed for 20 years. God said, I promise you, I promise you, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And then time happens. Let me tell you this, during the time period. Because we've got it all in our mind. It's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen tomorrow. And then Abraham goes and holds hands with Sarah. Nothing happens. Amen. Waits a little while and nothing happens. Promise delayed. Are you with me? We're all grown-ups here, but we're not going to talk grown-up today. Okay, man. Nothing happens. 20 years. He keeps being promised. He keeps on being disappointed. He keeps on being disappointed. But he staggered not the promise of God through unbelief. He acted upon it. God had to revisit him after 20 years because then it happened in his reasoning. Amen. Even Sarah. Sarah said, uh, I've got this girl, uh, my handmaiden, and I can't do it for you, but I think she can do it for you. I, I, I'm not going to go there because that's not the message, but I want you to understand. Have you ever reasoned things away because it, things delayed? Have you ever reasoned something away because of a delay? And when God speaks it, you must understand that he understands your condition, he understands your position, and he understands, listen to me, he understands the, 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 the turns that you was going to make, the, 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 the choices you was going to make, but he still didn't change his mind. He told you and he hadn't changed his mind. He told you and he hadn't changed his mind. He told you and he hadn't changed his mind. If he called you to preach, called you to teach, amen, called you to start a business, called you to write a book, whatever he called you to do, he hasn't changed his mind about it, even though it delays. So he kept on walking with Sarah, kept on hanging with Sarah. Even though there was some reason in the middle of it, he kept on hanging with Sarah. And then God comes back to him and he said, the time is now. Matter of fact, by this time next year, you're going to hold your promise. And that should have leaped in somebody's spirit. Amen. This time next year. Amen. He didn't just laugh it away. He didn't laugh it away. He acted upon it. Amen. He said, baby, come here, honey. Baby, come here. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. 
You better sit down. <laughs> Amen. She started squeezing my hand real good. <laughs> Your timing was off on that laugh now, I'm telling you. <laughs> Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but believed what all what he was promised, he was also able to fulfill. If God speaks some things to you that's way out of your reach, it's probably God and not you. If it's way beyond your, your human imagination or your human ability, if it's beyond your ability, it's probably God. And he'll whisper, are you going to believe him? You're going to believe me? And the devil, the thief, comes and says, it ain't true. It ain't true. It ain't true. It ain't true. A lot of ministries have not started because of unbelief or the enemy robbing, robbing the faith. Amen? I'm not talking to this church, so this church ain't like that. Not anymore. Mm. Wow. Let's go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And I'm going to start the tenth verse. It said, finally, brethren, you're not as fast as Sister Thera. He's on it. Finally, brethren, watch this, watch this. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? His might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles or the carefully planted schemes against you of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you'll be able to stand, withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, I'm going to say it again, having done all to stand, stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking this, wait a minute, above all, above all, I like it in the King James translation because it, it says above all, that means you, you must understand, you, you better get this one. Above all, watch this, taking the shield of faith wherein you be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance, with all supplication for all saints. Come on, give God some praise. So here, Nero, now I'm, I'm, I'm taking to a place where above all, I need to have the shield of faith. The shield was something that went before them, they even had a shield barrier that would actually come and take the shield if it was, if it was a, a, a mighty warrior. But the shield would go out in front. They would hide behind the shield, and then they would take a, they would take a shot. Amen. They'd hide behind the shield, and the enemy would come in, and he would take, the Roman soldiers would arm up like this. The enemy would come and shoot fiery darts or arrows wrapped up with cloth that was on fire, and they would shoot them at these shields. The shields was wood wrapped with leather. And if you didn't soak the leather, I'm talking about soaking it with water, making it so heavy and so saturated that the moment the arrows hit it, they would extinguish. I can hear it. I can hear it in the spirit. Why? Because the water, come on, the water of the word or being soaked up, it would extinguish the moment the fiery darts would hit. Woo! I've got to, I've got to give you some revelation on this. It says this, this is in, in 616, it says, above all, I love that word, above all, that means it's most important, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able. Ye shall be able in the Greek simply means this, it's the same word deutimus that we get from Acts 1-8, power, authority, amen, dynamite, amen, his might, his power. We shall be able. I can do all things through Christ who 
strengthens me. Amen. So I take this shield of faith wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. Look at this. Wouldn't you like to extinguish every flaming dart of the devil that he tries to shoot in your direction? Wouldn't you like to do that? Well, I'm going to tell you this. You can. And I'm going to tell you this. You will. Come on. I'm going to tell you, you're going to do that even today. Because I'm going to tell you this, he will keep firing the same dart, the same lightness of the same dart, because he's trying to penetrate your faith. He's trying to get you to doubt in a certain area. God will speak something to you. He tries to, he tries to combat it. He tries to come against it and try to talk you out of it. But I want you to understand, there's, there's, there's some people in this place that's got some bulldog faith. He says, I'm not budging. I'm not moving. I'm going to believe exactly what he told me, and I'm not going to go anywhere until he tells me to go. Glory to God. Mm. See, Ephesians 6.16 assures that if you have this field shield of faith lifted up in front of you, you will supernaturally be empowered to defend yourself against the fiery darts of the enemy. Supernaturally defend yourself. Amen? So now I'm, I'm, I'm out of myself. I'm out of my own ability. I'm not exhausted anymore. I'm not fearful anymore. Why? Because I can stand up and say, like David, you come with me in a spirit of sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen? I put my rock in a sling. Come on, I, I'm not going to do that today. Come on, I, I put my rock in a sling and I, I, I aim it at the enemy. Why? Because I'm not afraid of the enemy anymore. Come on, I'm like Lester Summerall, because Lester Summerall, uh, uh, this great evangelist, he was over in a, uh, over in a land where they didn't, they didn't have any air conditioning. It's, well, he was just grew up in that time zone like we did. The windows was open, and he felt this evil present. He was at a, he was at a revival, and he felt this evil present come in his room. And as it come in the room, it shook his bed across the floor, and he was in the bed and shook his bed across the floor. And he felt that evil presence. He got up out of the bed and he said, Devil, I bind you and I command you to get out of here in the name of Jesus. And that evil presence, whoom, left the room. Amen? That's powerful, isn't it? Most of us would have been happy with that. Lester Summerall was in an iron bed, sleeping in an iron bed, probably weighed 200 pounds. He looked at his bed and the reposition of his bed, and he said, hey, wait a minute. Get back in here. Some of you look at me like, that's crazy. The devil came back in. He felt that evil presence come back in. Lester someone said, put my bed back where you got it. And then Lester someone said, get out of here now in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise. True story. I got to see that mighty man of God in Columbus, Ohio, at a Rod Parsons concert, or not, or a conference, yes. He was up there. No, no. I seen him, and I seen that mighty man of faith, and I want you to understand that God has no favorites. And if he did it for Lester Summerall, he'll do it for you. Amen? No matter what's going on in your life. God is for you. Mm. You will be able to extinguish every fiery dart that the devil ever tries to send your way. I know you get tired, but understand this. Instead of trying to fight it physically, you must understand you just got to soak your shield. You just got to keep soaking your shield. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith where you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We talk about the power of God, getting him involved. This is what it means. We talk about putting those words together. When the Greek words of the phrase are used together... There are, it could actually be translated like this, above all, taking the shield of faith by which you are dynamically empowered. Come on. 
Paul used the Greek words to explain the supernatural empowerment that occurs when a believer uses the shield of faith. It's not just to, for looks. It's not just to hang up. You've got to hide behind that. You've got to make sure that you're protected with that. Amen. I take the, I take the word and I, I apply it to my life and I believe it and I soak my shield. Mm. The shield of faith becomes drastically or dynamically, supernaturally empowered to act as an impenetrable wall of defense against the enemy's tactics. In other words, faith is a shield to the believer. It's our shield. It's what we hide against. He is our sword. He is our, our shield and our lifter up our head. Amen? Mm. I've got some things that I wrote down because I, 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 want you, I want us to grab a hold of this. The word quench means this. To quench is to quench is by dousing or to extinguish by drowning in water. To quench, to quench, extinguish the darts, I've got to drown that in water. Amen. Let's talk about soaking. The Bible says in, in Romans 10, 17, that our faith increases by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So my shield is soaked by the word of God. I have that shield. Everybody's been given a measure of faith. The, the, listen, the more word I've got in me, the bigger my shield is. I don't want to be hiding behind uh, a little buckler. I, I, I want to be, I want to be hide, I want to I'd be hiding behind the big shield of faith. I believe that God has called us to do some, some, some big things, so we've got to have a big shield. Amen? Because the enemy definitely wants to try to pop a shot at us. When our faith becomes word-saturated or word-soaked, it becomes just like the soldier's water, a saturated or water shield. Now, I want you to understand that in, in my life, I think, I think many times I've had times where it seems like my shield looked like a porcupine. I mean, how many has ever had felt like that? It seems like every, I've, had, I've had 50 darts shot at me. How many has ever felt like that? I believe this is where we're at. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask them to, to come, and we're going we're gonna to give a, a word to close I believe that we've got to refuse to we, we've got to refuse to let ourselves be the devil's victim. We've got to hold our word doused shield of faith, put it in put it around us that it completely covers our life. And let God empower us for the things that's ahead. Just a few moments ago, Brother Rick, I I, I seen a vision, I shared it with you. I seen somebody standing behind a shield that was not water doused. I'm talking about that it wasn't soaked with water. And I've seen this shield here, and I believe it's for somebody in this house. Amen? And somebody may be watching, but it's for somebody in this house. This is what I see. I seen that shield engulfed in flames because a lack of word or Lack of exercise. He got tired in the battle. And I seen this individual. I didn't, I didn't know who it was. I didn't, didn't see their face. But I seen them almost take off running. And that was the exact position that the enemy wanted him, them in. Because now they're engulfed. And the heat got so intense that they, the one behind the shield wanted to take off running. The moment they take off running, they are vulnerable to the enemy's attack. As I sat there and I came back, I sat there and, and, and was listening to, to Pastor Jeff. I came back and I seen water coming down from heaven. I'm talking about just like someone poured out a big, big vessel or like a, a big wash trough of, of water, and I seen it extinguish 
the shield, amen, extinguished that and completely, and the one that was behind it held their ground because they supernaturally had heaven come down and give them their position or cause them to stay in the position. I want to say this, no more doubting. I don't doubt my salvation, and I don't doubt my healing. I don't doubt my deliverance, and I don't doubt my miracle. Come on. My shield is soaked with the water of the Word. The Holy Spirit flows out of me like a river. Come on, are you in this house? Will you stand with me? His Word is before me. Therefore, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on. Every fiery dart is quenched. I am who Jesus says I am. I can do what Jesus says I can do. I am not limited by my personal limitations. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. God's goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Signs and wonders follow me. I don't follow signs and wonders. They follow me because of my position in Christ. That same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives within me. I am not weak. I am strong. I'm not pitiful. I'm powerful. I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from it. Jesus paid it all and gave it back to me. He adopted me as a son. He don't abuse his children. He don't throw them out there to get wasted. He says, soak me up, son. Soak me up, daughter. Soak me up. Soak up my truth. Soak up my truth. You're going to be armed with mighty power. He said he's called you for greatness, but he wants you to see yourself in his position. Therefore, I boldly proclaim that I am victorious. I am victorious. No matter what comes my way, you must understand that I'm standing beside, I'm standing behind a, a water-soaked shield and no penetration from the enemy can get to me. So whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. When his voice says it, I believe it. Whatever he wants me to go, I'll do it. Therefore, As I follow the Lord, He is my shepherd, and I shall not fail. I shall not lack. I shall not have anything in my life the enemy can take from me. Amen? It's time to gather up your, your, your little children like a hen gathers his chicks. That's what the, the Word says. He said, I'm like, a, I'm like a hen that gathers her chicks. Check them under my shield. It's time, mamas, to go gather your children. Come on, it's time, daddies, to go gather your children. Put them behind the shield. Amen. If they're grown, just put some more water on your shield and say, Father, I stand by your word that me and my household shall be saved. Mm. I, I want to I wanna speak to somebody in this house because I, I believe that you are the guest of honor. Some of this in this house, you was about to cut and run because the battle got too great for you. But the Lord sent me here to tell you that water is coming from heaven now. I know you. 
I know you was going to abort mission. I know that you was going to run away. But God said, I'm not done with you. I'm, I'm not completed. You haven't fulfilled what I, I've called you to do. And, and I'm, not going to, I'm not going to let any temptation that's overtaken you, which is common to man, but I'm giving you escape from it. Come on. You're in this house and you was ready to quit. God said he's not done with you. You run to these altars right now. Come on, by the grace of God, run to these altars and say, I'm not done with you. He's not done. He's not done. He's not done. As you say, Pastor Jeff, I believe that the water is coming from heaven. I believe it's coming from heaven. Oh, I trust in God. Say this with me, Lord Jesus. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Come on, say it with me. I believe you. I believe you. Lord Jesus, I believe you. Come on, say it. Come on, say it with me. Jesus, I believe you. I believe you called me. And I'm not backing up. Gracie Jet. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on, come on. Come here. Mama, come with me. Come here, come here. Brother Rick. Come here. It's so good to see you all in this house. Mm-hmm. It's going to help some folks. Stand right here, y'all. Make it a word. Grace. I love your faith. I love your faith. Amen. I love Jet's faith. It's just like, it's all right. It's all right. How early was your baby born? 25 weeks. 25 weeks early and five days. That's early. He was one pound, what? He was two pound and got down to what? One nine, one ten. Let me have it, yeah. This is going to help some people. There was a word that went forth. I remember... I remember the Lord speaking to me on a Wednesday night. Was it a Wednesday night? And he said that, I said that you're pregnant now. Don't be fearful to share it. Amen? Remember that? Watch this. She had the baby. She had Coda. Things wasn't fully developed. Amen? Tell us about Coda. This is your unwavering faith, both of you. Because at any time, if you would let the devil have his little do and say, oh, I can't, I can't. All of you have stayed in faith. Tell us about Coda right now. Currently, baby boy is standing at four pounds and one ounce. He was off his oxygen for 20 to 30 minutes yesterday. It was breathing just fine. Would you would you recommend to people that's been thinking about cutting and running to get back behind the shield? Don't lose your faith. Even in the darkest times, I had to remind myself of this since I've had Coda, but I know God has never forsaken me or my family or my son, and he's good. Yeah. Yes. Now. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on, give God some praise in this house. say this that God is nowhere near done nowhere near done I want those that's going to get baptized and I want my uh, my ministers to go up and get get ready amen I want you to go and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna pray before I want you to minister we talk to ministers class I want you to go and we're gonna have a prayer service up there these are gonna be baptized you you don't want to miss this this baptismal service it's gonna be powerful Before I go up, there's still some people that need to move. I'm just not trying to pull more people up here. I'm just, I'm just telling you, you need to move because you, you was thinking about giving up. God said, I'm not done. You was just, I see it in the spirit. You was just like this. You was, you was, do I stay? Do I, do I, do I stay? Do I, do I leave? Do I, do I stay? Do I, do I, do I leave? And I've watched God pour his water. Whoosh! I watched him pour his heavenly water of his word and extinguished all the fiery darts that you thought was going to overtake you. I'm telling you, God is victorious in your life. Will you say, will you say, sing like there's no tomorrow, like you always do. Thus sought the Lord and he heard and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord.
Come on, give God some praise in this house. Glory to you. Christy, what's God done in your life? Father, I ask you, dear God, to touch Christy all the days of her life. I thank you, dear God, for the hand, your hand that's upon her. I thank you, dear God, Lord, for that gift of hospitality that flows through her life. Lord, she's the real deal. And I ask you, dear God, Lord, to baptize her with fresh fire. She soaks her shield, and dear God, as she follows you in Jesus' precious name. Christy, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Bear with Jesus in baptism raised again to walk in the newness of life. <laughs> Come on, let's give it up for Jessica. This little girl is hungry. Jessica, is there anything you want to say? Jessica, Father, I ask you, dear God, to touch Jessica, saturate her with your presence. Father, I ask you, dear God, for your Holy Ghost, just to your dear God, penetrate her like never before. In the precious name of Jesus. Jessica, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Buried with Jesus in baptism, raised again to walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. <laughs> And you want to be dunked seven times according to like Naaman was. Yes. Church, I ask you to be praying. And we're going to baptize her seven times. Father, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you, dear God, Lord, for your peace. I thank you, dear God, for your infilling, your baptism of your Holy Spirit, dear God, prophesying, words of knowledge gift of healing. Dear God, I, I thank you, Lord, that when she stands, Lord, demons flee. In Jesus' name. Christian, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, buried with Jesus in baptism, raised again to walk in the newness of life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Huh. 
Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. And then we'll get that emotion. I'm going to put it in Come on, give God some praise in this epicalemos. Jesus. Come on, praise team. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I'm trusting God, my Savior, the one who will never everyone for coming out this morning what a great service we've had don't forget today at five o'clock pastor will have a class 6 30 tonight prayer we love you guys it's time to go out be the church don't forget about next wednesday night 6 30 next sunday morning at eight o'clock then again right here at 10 we love you guys go out and be the church yeah